What's going on you guys I'm out of work and the radar had this nice well well it looked well organized band of storms that were marching across the state and I got out just in time to be ahead of them but I don't see it I don't know where it's at um, maybe it's just not close enough yet the way it looked on the radar it looked really organized it looked like I might see a shelf cloud roll in like I did um, like I did the other couple was like a couple of weeks ago when I did that long vlog post about my trip up to the camper where we had the uh, shelf cloud roll in, but I'm just not seeing it here, which is kind of a bummer because, like I said, I got out from work and I figured I would be just in time for the action. Uh, it's extremely hot out right now. We're actually under like a a severe heat weather statement kind of thing whatever you know it's i think the heat index is pushing close to 100 degrees but the humidity is really high and it's just really nasty what i would figure is conducive to popping up storms but you know i'll show you out the window here it really doesn't look bad um so i don't know i've got my fingers crossed i'm hoping i'm hoping that the weather makes an appearance here you know i'd like to shoot it although i don't have a weather sealed kit i've got my my usual what I call you know my daily driver kit you know which is the Pen F 17 millimeter um, I think I've got the 12 millimeter and 8 millimeter which is a weird it's kind of a weird setup I'm trying to remember what I was thinking when I put this together I mean I know 17 millimeters just kind of like the all-around walk around lens on the pen for me for a lot of people um, the 12 millimeter I'm not sure landscapes right that makes sense I'm guessing yeah that's what I was thinking um, and the 8 millimeter too I mean I use the 8 millimeter for landscapes as well you know and a little tip I, I might have mentioned it on my vlog I can't remember if I have or not because I've done quite a few vlog posts but if I haven't mentioned it here let me mention it now it's something it's a tip that I gave out on our Philadelphia workshop that we just did when shooting with a fisheye, everybody knows, and if you don't, you don't know. If you center the horizon line in the center of your frame, it removes well a lot of the edge distortion that you'll get on a horizon line. Um, you might see a little bit, but for the most part, you can remove it almost completely from the shot uh, by centering the horizon line on your frame. Now, if you also, another trick you can do to help alleviate some of the extremeness of a fisheye. If you wanted to say use your fisheye as an ultra wide angle lens, what I suggest doing is taking your camera and setting the aspect ratio to 16 by nine. So you're cropping out some of the top and some of the bottom. And um, again, if you center up that horizon line, what you end up with is just a super wide shot, which looks, they look like a panoramic shot in a single photo. And that's something that um, that I've been wanting to try and I keep forgetting to do. And that is set my aspect ratio to 16 by 9 with a fisheye, center the horizon, and then do a panel with the fisheye. Just kind of curious to see how well it would work out. See if um, Photoshop could merge that panorama together because I'm guessing you're still going to get some edge distortion. Especially if you have something like vertical in the shot, like a tree close by. Um, if not, if you've got you know a pretty, pretty wide open vista to shoot, I think it would be a really cool way to get an insanely wide panorama. I mean, think about it. You uh, really only have to do a couple of moves to have done a 360, right? It's food for thought. Something to try. Um, I'm going to turn the camera off now. Do my drive here, and if the weather gets interesting. I'll bring the tracker back out and uh, start talking to you guys about what I'm shooting. See you in a bit. All right, so here it is. 
guess I did get a little bit of weather out of this. The wind is howling. Howling. Hopefully I don't get struck by lightning out here. But I can see the rain coming across the field down there. So I'll be soaked here in a minute. But yeah. line between light and dark. Just how wild the clouds are starting to look up there. And the fact that I can barely keep my hat on my head. fun didn't look probably too dramatic but that wind definitely uh, brings it up a notch yep still recording just had to make sure all right oh, I need to get my seat belt on let me just put you right there on the steering wheel for a second fun fun I suppose I should turn my headlights on clamp to the steering wheel <laughs> this is a different perspective on things well hey it wasn't the most at the beginning it was photogenic um, how I was shooting it uh, bracketed just because I want that leeway oh, there's branches in the road um, so bracketed three shots at two exposure values each um, I started off at like F11. Uh, those were settings from a previous setup. I don't know what I was shooting last. Ah, something in Philadelphia. Ooh, that lightning was close. Um, so plenty of depth of field on those shots. Shooting with the 12 millimeter F2, I put that on, took the 17 millimeter off. Um, almost wish I had something a little bit longer, you know, but I don't have a prime, maybe the the 45 might have been a little too long for what I wanted. So I think the 12 millimeter will work. I mean, make do with what you got. And I'm still sticking to the primes only on the pen. So hey, it are what it are. Um, I guess I'll turn the camera off right now. I really don't have a whole lot to say other than I'll just make sure that the pictures get processed tonight and shared on this vlog. I just want to focus on driving right now. Everybody is driving really slow that's so weird the wind is coming from the completely other direction right now that's bizarro um yeah so let me turn the camera off do some driving get home work on these photos and i have a box from olympus coming today i have no idea what it is so maybe i'll open that box up on the vlog too all right it's getting sketchy folks i'm turning the camera off i'll see you in a bit All right, so I made it home and uh, it's still raining out. It's definitely cooler. It was crazy hot earlier. And like I said before, you know, I knew I had a package coming from Olympus today. Lots of times 
you don't really get notification of what's coming or when it's coming. I just make sure that I have uh, FedEx notifications set up so that I get a text telling me that I've got a box coming. And um, so here's the box. I'm not sure what it is. I think I might know what it is. Um, big box. It's kind of heavy. Let's see. Who knows? I love rain. Whoa. You know what it is. You probably don't know because I've already had one for a while, but I had a pre production version of it. This, folks, is the real deal. This is a production version of the 300 millimeter F4. So, with that being said, let's open it up. Let's see what comes in the box. Because I really don't know. Because the model that I've been shooting with since Arizona in May was pre production and it was handed to me by our tech rep, Eric, um, who was there for the workshop. And he just had it in a case with a bunch of other lenses as well so I figure I kind of know what the packaging is like I'm gonna guess it's very similar to the 40 to 150 uh, packaging it looks like it so far there we go so you've got your warranty card and product literature on the top there and I assumed that it came with one, but I wasn't sure. But now I've got some confirmation there that there is indeed a pouch for it. Granted, a, a longer pouch than any other lens that I've got so far. I've either got short arms or this is a long pouch. Or both. Lens condom. Styrofoam. It's different. No gold doubloons in there. Oh, here comes a kid outside. Huh? Hello? Oh. Carter's photo bombing my unboxing. It's okay. No, it's just, you know, He's expecting company. Lens hood. No, what is that? So here's the lens hood. Oh, you know what? It smells good. So this is actually something that I haven't seen yet. Um, so this is a beauty ring. If you decide to not use the tripod collar, when you undo the collar to take it off, There we go. When you take the tripod collar off, you've got these lugs that are sticking out. It's not the most beautiful looking thing, but you are given, where's my matchup line here? There we go. But you've got this beauty ring that covers those lugs. So that's pretty cool actually. I have handheld shot this lens probably as much as I have shot it with the tripod um, or mounted to a tripod but in all honesty I really don't see myself using this as 
much as I see myself using this. So for me, whoa. so for me, um, the tripod collar is going to stay on. <laughs> I can get it back on. I'm such a simpleton. All right. I don't remember what line I had it lined up with. I'm really not doing a good job of showing you how this works, am I? There we go. I had it lined up the whole time. Yeah, so there you go. How cool is that? I'll talk to you guys later. I'll... I don't know if that's coming out of the tree or if that's coming out of the sky. Anyways, let you guys go. I'm going to go put this in the bag, box up the uh, pre-production model, and get that on its way back to Olympus. See ya.